Hello, Tony. Welcome to the Nutri Narratives podcast. I am so excited to have you. Thank you for be- thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Ah, uh, yay. I've been looking forward to this day. I know we scheduled it like a month before and I always kept in mind, okay, that time with Tony is coming up. It's coming up. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah. Tony, please tell us about yourself. I know that you're a registered dietitian as all of my guests are, but I sure would like to know your background. Sure. Yeah. So I am a registered dietitian. I've been a registered dietitian. It's my only career path. Um, I knew I wanted to be one, fortunately, at a younger age, which I think is kind of rare. Um, but, you know, like most things, I think a lot of RDs, we tend to get into the field because we've personally struggled with our weight or our relationship with food. And so that really is at the core, kind of what led me to this path. So growing up, I was overweight. I was very insecure. I was teased about my weight. And it just kind of got to me to a place where I was like, I want to do something about it because everyone seemed to have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. Um, And I then I started thinking like, maybe that's why I was really athletic. I was like, maybe this is why I'm not on varsity as I got older and things like that. And so I kind of started to blame my weight on a lot of things why I wasn't getting into the right relationships or have or had any attention from boys and you know, growing up. Um, other than negative attention. And so basically, I decided I wanted to lose weight. But like any teenager who chooses to lose weight, we don't really look to any professionals to do that. <laughs> um, I unfortunately decided to look up things in magazines. I started just kind of overhearing conversations of like different peers and um, even family members and stuff and kind of just picking things up. And it just became kind of an obsession for me. And I got really restrictive in my eating behaviors and exercising excessively. And it was just really not healthy, right? It was just constantly just being obsessed with food. Um, and so I knew that there had to be another way and I was determined to find it. So um, I went to school to become a dietitian to figure that out. <laughs> Incredible. But I loved how you had this gut feeling. Like you you knew that there there's a better way of doing this and I don't mm-hmm. want to continue living imprisoned and Mm -hmm. how wise of you at your young age to say, I'm going to figure this out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I think being, I was always introspective. Like I remember I had journals since I was like eight years old, seriously. Like so, I I was always just journaling and it was just something that I just naturally was drawn to. And so, um, I, as I tried to help myself a lot, but obviously that can be beneficial. But then at some point, I think, you know, getting professional help is, is also better. But, um, yeah, I think just for being from a young age, I was kind of really in touch with my emotions and I always wanted to, I also could have been part of like my, the fixer mentality. Like I was just a fixer. <laughs> I get that. I, yeah. <laughs> I absolutely relate to everything you have said thus far because for me, my interest started in high school, weight, but I, I had the opposite problem. I was ultra skinny, but I was, and I mean, people were telling me I was skinny. And so there, there's that story where it's the opposite end of things, but yet I was interested in health at that young age too. Mm -hmm. And then my classmates were also reading things. And so was I, and I was so drawn just like you to join their conversations or correct their conversation mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. about what I've read, what they've read. And, and so I absolutely get it. We, we have all started pretty much in a similar place of that interest for ourselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And not for nothing though, it makes us, I think it makes us better RDs because we yes. really did experience it personally. Mm-hmm. Um, so not only can we, you know, and we also know that we can read all of the best advice, but it really comes down to application and we know that well, right? Yes. So I think it's helpful to just have that experience and to also physically feel the transformation of like kind of being unclear and scattered, obsessive, um, you know, even restrictive to a place of like more educated, uh, more focused on like balance and understanding. And we can feel there's a big shift in 
you know, even just our happiness, oh. which I remember getting to a point. I was like, even if this is the way, I don't want it to be the way because I am miserable. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, I don't care if I lose 20 pounds. I am tired and cranky and I can't focus and I'm like just uh, hungry all the time. <laughs> like, this yes. is just, this is just not worth it. <laughs> I, I've experienced that for me. Again, it wasn't weight, but because I thought it was healthy to eat low fat, like back in mm-hmm. my day, because mm-hmm. I told you I'm like way older than you. So, but back in the nineties, it was all about low fat. And I mm-hmm. thought I had to be this dietitian that was setting the example to everybody I came across, but I wasn't feeling good either. I right. didn't have energy and, mm-hmm. and I was feeling cranky too. So we have similar situations, but coming from a different, um, starting point, but we, yeah experience the not feeling well part of things. Definitely, definitely. And I think that's in life in general. We have all different types of experiences and we can never really fully understand exactly what everyone's going through, but we have very similar scenarios or certain feelings that we could definitely relate to. So I, I think yeah. Unfortunately too, when you're when we're young when you're young, like that's just it's just how people are. Like it could be about your weight, being too skinny, being too fat, being, or it could be about your nose is too big. It could be like your ears oh, yeah. pop out. It could be, I remember one time I got a haircut that I was, oh my God, it was so embarrassing. I was, I hated the haircut so much. And then the people in my table like made fun of me for it. It's like, I don't like this either. Like, like, like it's so, like, but it's just so cool. But I mean, I'm like, I'm, you know, at the same time, we have to kind of, you know, take those scenarios and, you know, flip them on their head. Yes, exactly. Society will always be there and there will always be the cruel, heartless people. Mm -hmm. But yes, it's up to us to stay down there, to be affected by their words or to do something about it. And Mm -hmm. from what I can see, you rose up, you rose up above the occasion and you you said, I'm going to come up with this plan to to make my life so that it is better. And so did going to school help? Did going through um, dietetic schooling, did it? Yeah. I think definitely, you know, getting the proper education about nutrition, it was definitely helpful. I mean, I also think that I don't know if you've ever heard this, but I know a lot of my nurse friends uh, when they were in school, like when they were reading about all these different conditions in a nursing school, they always are like, I think I have that condition. So me as a dietetic student, I was like, should I, should I try this diet? Should I should know how this feels for like, if I was supposed to prescribe this in a hospital, like I need to know like what that feels like. I can't just tell someone to do it if I've never done it. So, I mean, part of it was getting caught up in that for sure. Um, but you know, at the same time, I really started to, uh, you have to approach things and it's easier to see now everything's better, like 2020, but like retrospectively looking back, like, it really was just a giant experiment. And that's exactly what I teach my clients. It's like, you know, we're learning, we're applying, we're assessing, we're yeah. growing, we're adapting, we're changing, uh, we're learning again. Mm-hmm. And so I would probably describe like me going to school as a dietitian, like super, super helpful, but also like I may have gotten caught on a couple, <laughs> a couple plans <laughs> that I probably had no business <laughs> experimenting my, with my body with, but you know, it, it is what it is. Yes. And. It's okay because we've all experimented and now we can share it with our clients, right. patients that we've had, clients that we've had, future students. You know, I've been there and let me tell you, uh, it didn't work quite well for me, but you know, so we have stories to share, which is fine. I've had students continuously experiment and, and I, I don't stop them. Because I think unless I see there's a danger, if they are truly going right. into danger zone, right? I'm going to pull them out of there. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. you know, it doesn't hurt for them to just experiment and see so they can share. Yeah. And I think it, it really is all about kind of the mindset behind it. And that's a lot of times when I teach my clients, it's like, if you can genuinely tell me you're going to be doing this diet because you just want to see how your body responds and you want to be observant, that's fine. But if you think that this is the end result and this is what you're going to do for a temporary fix and then go back to your old way of eating and like, and then the weight's not going to come back, like then we have to kind of change it. Like, are you doing it just to lose weight and then never do it again? Cause that's not going to work out for you. you know? <laughs> Excellent. I, I, I love yeah. how you you share that with them. Mm-hmm. So then did you get professional help or how did you get out of 
that feeling of, okay, I'm not feeling good. There's a better way. What was able to help you have those aha moments? Well, I think it was continuously, um, you know, as, as a dietitian or even when I was in school before I became a dietitian, you know, I like, I actually started my blog. So my business is called Tips with Tony. It's a blog that they started in my junior year of college. And it was partly because a lot of people knew I was going to school to become a dietitian. They knew I ate healthy. They knew I was physically active. Like I was, a, you know, a really committed to a healthier lifestyle. And so people kept coming to me for help. But with that, you know, is like, should I try this diet, which is like either like super low carb or super low fat or now today's high fat, you know, what, whatever's trending, you know, so it's like I was constantly getting all these questions. And I kept looking in, up into these things. And I was just like, no, nope, this is just another way of restriction. Like this is, you know, restriction is not the answer. It's part of the problem. Like we really need to focus on balance. We need to focus on fueling, to making healthy swaps. And so I started doing that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I started to just um, just be that reliable resource for people. Mm-hmm. And because I was that resource, I had the blog. It provided some sort of accountability to really just continuously be kind of paying attention to what's going on in the media and seeing how ineffective those strategies were to then creating another way. And so like I, instead of me kind of going against the grain and calling out all of the BS stuff, mm-hmm. I kind of was just like, you know what? I'm just going to be that resource. I'm going to provide them with nutrition education. And so anything I was learning in school, I was creating YouTube videos about it. Wow. I'll never forget. My first video in college was all about whole grains. And then the second one, killed it. It was all about like alcohol because who doesn't want to learn about alcohol in college? <laughs> and like that's honestly where it just started to kind of, you know, like um like it was like a domino effect, like a positive domino effect from there. Where I was just realizing like I all right, people really are because then people started watching, right? So people started following the blog. Yeah. And so it was like, okay, people are watching. Like I need to, I've done the restrictive route. I know that doesn't work. Like let me just focus on practicing what I preach, which is mm-hmm. healthier swaps, taking a look at what you're currently doing, see if there's small ways you can modify and just, you know, continuously to work on that every day. Okay. I, ooh, I love, I love your philosophy. And it's very similar to what I embrace. So I see eye to eye with you on what you have seen, what you have developed. And so then, is that your main philosophy or have you adopted other philosophies in this non diet world? Um, I would say that's probably standard, but it really also, goes down to individualized care. Mm -hmm. So there, you know, unfortunately, there are a lot of allergies and tolerances. um, Just, you know, our bodies might not agree with certain foods. So as much as like there's general recommendations, I think that we have to remember that everyone is an individual and we need to make sure that we're paying attention to that. Right. Um, so there's like basic concepts that I think are applicable to most people. But then, you know, we have to pay attention to like, is there a GI condition? Because, yes. you know, we're, if we're preaching fiber and this person has like crazy IBS where they can't digest fiber well, then we need to like try a different plan at first. You know, mm-hmm. maybe we can work themselves up to that. So things like that where, you know, obviously, you know, as like as an RD, we're able to kind of know that. But I think in general, it's hard when you're trying to teach on like, like, um, social media platform or like a podcast or, you know, it's like hard. We can't do that. But that's where the one-on-one coaching that I provide is why I love it so much because it helps people to take all that information and figure out like how to sift through it to make it make be more clear to what it is that they should apply for themselves. Okay. So that is perfect. Perfect segue to I'm wanting you to share the um, your private practice, what you share in your coaching sessions what is the framework on sure. which you work with with your clients? Yeah. So like I said, everyone, I treat them like the individual that they are. But the beginning is basic where a basic like with what most RDs probably would do would be similar to like a 24 hour recall. So kind of just getting an idea of like what it is that they typically eat in a day. Um, how is that different from the weekends or when things go, you know, most people have a quote unquote good day and then a quote unquote bad day. Right. Um, so I have them kind of, 
Yeah, and I kind of have them elaborate on with that of like what that looks like with their food um, and kind of what are the barriers getting in their way. And then from there, we might kind of we usually pick apart a couple things that they feel most ready to kind of change. And I'll give them specific action steps based off of a couple of things that we've identified um, to implement. So it could be as simple as like uh, eating breakfast, drinking water. Mm -hmm. focusing on your steps, like very basic stuff. From there, I usually have my clients take photos of their food because many people come to me have done very like things that were very heavy on counting calories, counting points, Mm -hmm. um, tracking like almost everything. And I, they want, I want them to feel like motivated, like they're doing something. I want them to bring awareness because tracking does help bring awareness, but I don't want it to kind of trigger any sort of kind of if they have a history of disordered eating or even an eating disorder and they're so used to counting every calorie or every morsel of food it can be really damaging Mm -hmm. so i kind of do like a kind of middle ground where it's just take photos of your food for now let's be observant of that and then each week we kind of just chip away at like identifying like what i saw what they saw a lot of it is together it's not like i'm telling them what to do and they're listening it's actually they're telling me how they feel and i'm listening And then together we're deciding what it is that they feel most ready to change. Cause you know, when it comes to healthy living, there's so many areas. It's so much more than just your food. It's about, you know, your sleep, your stress, movement, even setting boundaries with family, friends and loved ones. Because if you can't do that, there's no space for you to do what you need to do for you. So a lot of times those are the sort of conversations and then. I mean, like I said, everyone is so individualized. So from there, you know, eventually, as I work with a lot of people who have an unhealthy relationship with food, but also want to lose weight, it's very challenging to help someone lose weight if they feel like food is the enemy. Mm. So I need, we need to first heal their relationship with food and then we can focus on weight loss. So at first, we'll just do very easy things. And I say easy, but it's like non invasive, like photos of your food. Um, you know, checking in with your hunger cues, like stuff like that. Then as they progress, if they want to, if they feel it's necessary, then we might put in a more advanced form of tracking where they're not feeling like it's going to trigger their old behaviors. Um, and then we just kind of work from there. So like I said, everyone is unique. Um, but I'm always listening and having them pay attention to how they feel. Yes. I love that you really listen to their story so that you really understand what's going on. And so then. How long is um, the uh, length of time that a client may work with you? That's a great question. I have a minimum six-month commitment because I've really learned that in order for someone, you know, first we have to unlearn all their their behaviors that have not been helpful for to them. Um, And you know, I have people. I mean, I have people of all ages, literally from eighteen to sixty five. But I would say most of the women that I, I, and I work with mostly women, I do work with some men, but I work with mostly women. And most of them, although I work in a variety of those ages, most of them are in their late 30s to early 50s. Oh, okay. So they've had many years to ha- l- learn the, the not greatest ways, right? I, I, I know how hard it was for me to reverse what I learned. And I was only dabbling in that for like a few years. So I can't imagine 30 to 40 years of that, right? Yeah. So we need time to unlearn those things. Then we need time to re-implement new things. And then we need time to make sure that those habits are there to stay. And it's not just another sort of program that they've done before, right? Because anytime you start something new, it's exciting. Anyone's going to be successful in the beginning of anything. Mm -hmm. The goal is like how long... And I always say this, everybody knows how to lose weight, but do they know how to keep it off? Most people do not learn that. X. Yeah. So we need it. So we need to make sure that they have, you know, a game plan and they can, they can understand that this is something that they feel comfortable with kind of taking with them, um, after the six months are up. And then some people might stay on if they choose to. Um, okay. but I usually have a minimum six month commitment. What is the longest length of time that you've had someone stay with you? Uh, well, I just graduated her, but my business is three years old. 
Um, it's a year and a half where I've been full time on my own, but prior to that, I was building on the side. Um, mm-hmm. so she was with me for three years and then we were decided she was been in maintenance for a year. <laughs> she, we were just didn't want to depart, but you know, it's so sweet. She yeah. like, it's rare that it's an online business. So I coach people from all over the world. She mm-hmm. just so happened to be a local person. Um, and we actually just got together socially distant. We did a walk, um, like, and we met up in, it was super, super nice to yeah. like, connect in that way like I really am close with my clients it's not just you know it doesn't feel like I mean yes I keep those boundaries so they're respectful of that but um it's it's special it's a special relationship to to know someone and they can depend on you for three years it's pretty cool absolutely and that to me says a lot I think she also stayed on for three years because she really enjoyed the the care the the service that you gave with compassion mm-hmm. and and love it's not just okay i'm here to help yeah but you you seem to go beyond that and really show them um how how much you really want them to succeed and that I believe that's why she stuck with you for that length of time. Yeah. Well, I guess I really do want people to succeed because I know how much it's made a transformation in my life. And I know it will make, I've watched, well, I've watched my clients confidence. It's not about the weight. Like in the beginning, they think that it is. And although I help them lose weight, it's, it's just so much more than that. It's just taking care of yourself. It's, you know, committing to what you said you were going to do. And I've had so many, I can't even tell you how many clients I've had quit a job, get a new job, get out of a relationship, um, become like doing a, a side hustle of something that they're passionate about. It's just, I believe that helping them to heal their relationship with food and just be the best versions of themselves is literally making this world better. Yeah. Because also too, I work with a lot of moms and their kids are watching. Mm-hmm. And so I truly believe that I'm helping them to kind of break that cycle and raise healthier kids. Mm-hmm. And those healthier kids are going to go out in the world and they're, who knows what they're going to become in this world. They can be anything they want to be. Mm-hmm. So and true. So, yeah. And I, I really do believe in that like cause and effect sort yeah. of relationship. So, so you really help them beyond just just the food part of things, just beyond the nutrition part of things, you're really giving that extra support in the other areas of their lives. Yeah, because if I don't, like, I mean, obviously, like, I'm not going to go outside of my scope. Like, so a lot of times if I feel like it's going towards, like, they need therapy, I'll recommend therapy or if it's, in, you know, even a trainer, I'm not a, I'm not a personal trainer. So I'll help them create fitness goals. But if they need an actual training program, you know, I'll refer out to that. Um, but I always say to them, it always comes up. I'm like, are you, are you happy? Like, are you energized? You feel good because I don't care if, you know, and you shouldn't either. If you lose, like going back to what I said earlier, if I help them lose weight, but they're miserable and they don't have healthy relationships with their family, right? If they're cooking separate meals, um, you know, sometimes that's okay, but most of the time, like, you know, they have to learn how to eat with family, friends, going to social events, all of those things. And so if they're doing, you know, this, a program and we're not talking about what's going on in their life, then that's not a sustainable program. That's not a sustainable plan, you know, and that's ultimately not going to help them in life, which is why we're doing this mm-hmm. to live a more fulfilling life. Yes. Excellent. I I love your insight in all that. So do you say you subscribe to intuitive eating, mindful eating? So I take like a middle ground approach. So I can't say I don't have like a special certification. I don't, I know intuitive eating, the term is very, um, like specific. Um, but I do help people get back in touch with their hunger cues. Um, I do help people pay attention to how they feel. I help them use mindful eating strategies. Um, so it is like, it's a combination of intuitive eating and weight loss. Like I said, for those who need to lose weight or want to lose weight, although that's not the main focus, it's usually I will help them to achieve a body that they want. They feel like they deserve or they want to achieve identifying that it's not what that's not all that it's about. Like there's a lot more to it. And, but there, there can be a middle ground. So I kind of find that it tends to be very polarized. Oh, um, yeah. I really have to, I like to, you know, 
help people find the middle. At the end of the day, we can't, we, it's not our job to tell people what it is that they want to need. It's, it's just, so it's just help them get there. That's, uh-huh. that's really what it is. Yes. Or help them understand or, or this is actually something that just recently came up on a podcast earlier. It was so awesome. He didn't even realize he said it. I'm like, you just struck gold. Like we need to like elaborate on that. Wow. But he was talking about like, you know, the difference between working from a place of ego and then working from like kind of like a spiritual place. Mm. And so we have to, as long as we get clear about kind of why you're doing this and if it's really truly because you want to feel good and be healthy, then I'm going to help you with weight loss. But if it's like an ego thing, because you just want to like prove that you can squeeze into a size four or, you know, whatever, yeah. wherever your starting point is. And I'm not saying that to be degrading. Girl, or anything, that's just like, real talk. Yeah. That's like it's just authentic. Yeah. So I just, I want to make sure that, you know, whatever I'm doing is going to be supportive of what the, what my client actually wants. Um, I could care less about what the world thinks about weight loss or in, in, in or intuitive eating or like whatever. <laughs> it's just like, I need to help my client. <laughs> High 10. <laughs> oh, you just don't know. Yes. Yes. No, I, I subscribe to what you, you say because I believe that every person looks through a different lens. Yes. And so as dietitians, we need to then switch up our lenses that aligns with theirs to help them in their goals. Exactly. So exactly. I, I really love what you just said. Yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. And so that brings me to, uh, let's see, uh, your, your book, you are writing a book. Is, is that related to what you do with your clients, the uh, mm-hmm. program that you deliver with yeah. them? Yeah, it's been difficult to write this book because as you know, nutrition is so individualized. Oh yeah. So it's, I can't, and I don't even want to say it's like a diet book because it's really not like it is like it's going to, it's going to help people with their nutrition. It's going to help them change their mindset and their, pers- and their perspective and all of those things and see things in a way that they don't have to be kind of be tied to their diet. Like it's so much more, there's so much more to life and I'm going to give them effective strategies on how to kind of create a healthier, you know, just committing to a healthier lifestyle and all that stuff. Um, but it actually goes back to being introspective. So the way I bring it all together and I'm teaching people, kind of how to kind of create their own nutrition plan is by talking about the parallels between dieting, dating, and romantic relationships. Love and it. I do this in a way that because it's not usually talked about together, but as a, I say this all the time, as a dietitian, um, you know, I've been, I'm pretty experienced, um, as, you know, working in the field and coaching many people. I am a nutrition expert, but I wish I could say the same for dating. Um, it's taken me a while <laughs> to kind of figure out like what it is that I want or need. And I wasn't looking for the right things. And so I had to kind of really take a look at like, why is it that I kept, why was I, kept, why was I continuously being attracted to like these men that couldn't really provide for me, give to me, serve me in any way other than maybe some lust or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So I say that to say um, there's a lot of correlations between um, dieting and romantic relationships in the whole dating world. So what I say by that is like, there's, there's a few, but just to get you to understand, it's like so many people want to skip the messy stuff, go straight to that fairy tale ending. But we have to date around. You have to get to know what you like, what you don't like to kind of create what works for you, right? So that's yeah. why I think think with dieting, it's like we can't tell people to don't do this diet, don't do that diet. You know, let them do it and let them learn from it. But mm-hmm. they also can't think like, this is going to be the end result and this is the thing you're going to marry. It's like, oh, like we have to be, you know, introspective and kind of be clear about what it is that, that, that we want and what is the purpose of this diet or this relationship. And mm-hmm. not everything needs to be, you know, a forever thing. And that's okay too, yeah. you know, but it's all to get you to that place of finding your forever diet. Mm. So that's what the book is about. <laughs> that is exciting. And I just know that from that point of view, that philosophy, it's, it will really help so many people. And um, it frees them from just looking through this tunnel and not being able to look at the big picture and, and look around to see what 
is really going to meet their needs. So Mm -hmm. I -hmm. love how you're making that analogy. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, I'm being vulnerable with it because you're like in the book, you'll hear a lot about my dating life. <laughs> um, you know, not too much, but you'll also hear about my nutrition life. And then I, you know, talk about my childhood and clients experiences and all of those things. But it's really just a way to, like you said, like help people see things in a different lens and right. hopefully help them get a little bit more clear about what it is that they're looking for or how to achieve what it is that they're looking for. Yeah. And your personal story, though, of all the ever areas that you're sharing in this book, it will resonate with those who will read it and they will see you that, wow, she really knows what she's talking about because she has been there and she has experienced what we've experienced. It may not be exactly the same, but you can relate for sure. And being that trans, well, being transparent with with the people who will read your book will really draw them to your yeah. your philosophy and mm-hmm. that will be so exciting when it comes out are you almost done with it or where are you yeah i i have a hard four month deadline like hard four month deadline i mean i it's really hard to write a book if you've ever thought about it. have you ever written a book well i feel a like you have a PhD. Yeah, yeah, i was gonna say that you have your phd so like yeah, that's, that's like a book yeah no <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um like yeah. it really is um time consuming but I um but good for you. Yeah. Thank you. I mean it's something that need, I need it needs to just be done already. So I'm going to, you know, I have it's okay. basically written um one chapter really needs to be written the rest are all done they just need to be sifted through. And um, fortunately, I have a a writing coach helping me through the process. He's not writing it for me, which I learned really early on. There are things called ghostwriters that Um, all these famous people that have all of these books have never written. Okay. (laughs) Do you know how disappointing that was for me to learn this? (laughs) Like, I am writing this thing, and it is hard. <laughs> yeah, oh, wow. But your experience of even this writing journey is is going to be, like, so valuable when you help other dietitians when yeah. they want to, to do this project themselves. Totally. totally. Yeah, but more yeah. power to you for, you for doing this. So we do look forward to your book when it does come out. Thank you. I'll definitely let you know. Anyone that's been, I've been a, on a guest for, I'm going to definitely have um, my assistant a message when, when the book comes out because I really appreciate the opportunity for being for being here and you'll probably get your own personal copy. <gasps> oh my goodness, I'm so excited. I can't yeah. wait. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're Tony, welcome. how can our listeners get in touch with you or if they want your services? Sure. Where should they turn to? I know I'm going to put it in the show notes, but you could definitely share it right here. Yeah. So you can find me on Instagram. That's where I hang out a lot at tips underscore with underscore Tony. That's Tony with an I. Um, I also have a nutrition podcast called the Tips with Tony podcast. Um, to awesome work with me. Thank it. you so much. Uh, to work with me, you can go to www.tipswithtony.com slash coaching or slash courses. I'm at my limit right now for one one-on-one coaching, but a, wow. the Healthy Living Foundations course that I have is a really great way to kind of get started. And then when a spot opens up, you'll be on my radar because you'll be within the program kind of already because anyone that's in my one-on-one gets access to that anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and wow. so it's just also it's a great start. It's something I have all my one-on-one clients go through to start with anyway. Um, okay. It's a great way to just, you know, yeah. get your feet in, get your feet wet. <laughs> so that alone, you saying that you're right now at your max of the one-on-ones, that's telling me you are sought after, girl. That means people are really appreciating your services and doing, uh, being very successful in their own journey because of you. And so yeah, you are sought you. after. That thank is so, so admirable. Thank Wonderful. You. Tony, I didn't tell you I was going to ask you this, but for fun, can, can you share with us Three things, uh, new nutrition practices that you like to practice on a regular basis. Hmm. Okay. Well, the first is the plate method. So basic, but so 
helpful. Absolutely. Like, so half of my plate, at least once a day, at least, I have a meal that where half of my plate is non-starchy veggies. The other place is um, a healthy starch. And then the other place is a lean protein. It's like super mm-hmm. basic, but so helpful. There's so much variety with that. Um, yes. They're really, really great. Really, really, really great. Um, another one is I always have ready prepared healthy options on hand so i always have things like salad kits frozen veggies that i can just microwave um smoked salmon hard-boiled eggs um things that really don't that way you know i do still prepare food throughout the week but if things come i'm in a pinch i don't really have an excuse to kind of go haywire (laughs) you know so i keep that on hand um and then probably the third um, is actually um, that I, inc- at the same time of me trying to cook at home and eat at home most often, I usually encourage my clients and me personally, I like to enjoy a meal out or in at, at least once a week because otherwise, especially with what's recently with we're recording this during COVID, yes. it's like you get kind of tired and bored of your own food. It doesn't matter how creative you get in the kitchen. It doesn't matter, you know, yes, how many yeah. things you swap out. Like it's nice to eat someone else's food. And I like to enjoy the fact that I don't have to cook or clean. And that doesn't mean I have to make it super unhealthy, but I can make a part of it, you know, if I want to have pizza or a part of it like a cheeseburger or whatever like I can make part of that while also feeling good and balancing it throughout the rest of the day or even within that meal so I actually encourage that I think it's super helpful yes 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 when I I love that also um I I've been working at home so and all of our students have been online but when we were all on campus I would always make sure with my colleagues let's go out to eat out to eat out at least once together Mm -hmm. you Mm -hmm. know and it brings us all together you know that it ties the bonds of us just eating together too and yes we can eat other people's food which is nice too yeah and it's so funny i made this joke my friend the other day she like tagged me in a post about like how to make your salads taste good or whatever and I w- and she didn't mean for it to be to me. She meant for it to be to like potential clients and just followers. And I was like, this is me. Like no salad. I eat salad all the time and I make it from home all the time. Yeah. But no salad ever tastes good when I make it as good as like, what do the restaurants do differently? I don't get it. I, oh, <laughs> I am so with you. Like yes. it's so weird. Like why is their salad so much better? I know. Like, <laughs> I, my whole entire meal at a restaurant can just be that because it's just like they're really things. good. Yeah, yeah. but flavor. <laughs> that at home. So. No matter how hard I try, so I know what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. So I love that. What is your favorite treat, or what is your favorite dessert? Or indulgence, um, however way you like to see it. Yeah, so I'm not actually pretty. I'm not big on sweets, but I do like a glass of wine or a mar- or, or a vodka martini. I like alcohol, <laughs> <laughs> so that is. I rather have like a gl- you know. I rather have a glass of alcohol with my meal than have dessert. I, that's just personally. I've, I've never really been a sweets person. Even when I struggled with my weight, I just always wanted more food. Like yeah, I'm more like more savory. Like you know that stuff <laughs> and and i get it because well i i'm also into nutrigenetics and and looking at that so even in our taste preferences we have that mm-hmm. tendency to have more savory or, mm-hmm. or or sweets and so it's it's how god made us basically so mm-hmm. very cool yeah. very cool i'm so glad you shared that with us and so I will definitely, Tony, be putting your contact information in the show notes so those who who listen can reach out to you. And I am incredibly thankful for you sharing your time with all the clients that you have. The book that you're writing, you have taken your time to spend with me, to share with our listeners. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And continue doing this incredible job that you have been doing. You've only been a dietitian really for eight years. I mean, that's a lot of years. (laughs) Not compared to you. (laughs) Would you look great, by the way? You look so young. (laughs) So, yeah. (laughs) I'm I'm proud. I'm so proud of your work and people going to you because you have this amazing experience and you are sharing it and helping people. So, Kudos to you. 
Well, thank you so much for being so inviting, encouraging, supportive, and thank you for, you know, teaching other people to become registered dietitians so we can do this and do it well.